Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Sailing Moksha. This is part three of the Weather Channel series on the Fane family after Hurricane Michael. There are two more before this. If you're interested in seeing those, you can find them on our channel or I'll put the links below. Uh, if you're just interested in our story and our channel, kind of what's going on, uh, be sure to subscribe, comment, like, follow, ring the bell, all of the YouTube jargon and lingo. <laughs> I'm sure something helps us along the way. So we also are going to put the link down to our t-shirts that we have. You gotta do something to keep you going. <laughs> anyway, just if you like our channel, watch. Thanks guys. We're about to start a new hurricane season and we're still working on the repairs on Mokcha, our sailboat from last hurricane season. When we first got here, we were really stagnant. We couldn't really catch up monetarily or on the work on the boat itself. We were just kind of stuck. If it wasn't for the weather, it was for lack of money. A lot of people actually went online and found our Fane Family GoFundMe and helped and gave money. And because of that, we were able to get on our feet that we were just struggling before to be able to do. And I was able to buy the parts for my boat. My job bartending has really, really helped bring that back around. I know where my next meal's coming from now, at least. Um, mostly, honestly, because so many people reached out and helped us. Been more comfortable at my job, I've been able to make more there and be able to provide a better life. It's, we're not living from meal to meal anymore. We sail My husband was diagnosed with cancer, uh, with terminal cancer. And we decided when we were sitting around the house and he was just sitting there sick, staring out of the window, that that's not what we wanted to do. He always wanted to sail. He always wanted to be out on the sailboat. And it's so important to me and my family to be able to to make that dream come true for him. Pretty much know how I'm gonna die. Doctors told me the chemo they gave me will kill me if the cancer doesn't come back. On a bad day, uh, I have no energy whatsoever. Uh, I shake really bad and uh, I get dizzy and faint, uh, I get vertigo. <clears throat> um, I feel like if I bend over, I'm gonna pass out. Pretty scary. It's hard to think about anything other than that because in the moment that's, I guess our animal nature takes over and we want to stay alive. So that becomes the focus of everything, is just uh, trying to get past that one moment. You don't really think about much else. Her inner strength is amazing, her resiliency, her ability to bounce back. You, you give her a horrible piece of news and she can solidify and just be strong and kind of something you can lean on. During the hurricane, I was the one scared. <laughs> she was the strong one. Yeah, well, he's sweet. <laughs> but I think we lean on each other. I'm as strong as I have to be for them. In the end, you look back, and it's a lot easier once you're through it and for somebody to point out and go, but look at all these things you did that was strength, and to look backwards and say, oh yeah, okay, I guess I was strong. I'm about 80% there, 
with the bow. We just have to get that mast, that last little bit, and put it all together. And I, that will be like the big, we pulled through. Our boat's back together. We can go back to that life that we want to live for him and for us. When something hits you like a hurricane and everything's gone away, it changes your priorities. When you get diagnosed with cancer, that changes your priorities. Make sure your priorities are something that won't change no matter what happens. Make sure your heart and your mind's in the right place.